Yep, well, uh, just got this new puppy. And I will say that I have finally found uh, my last bike. Uh, I don't ever, I, we won't say it's my last bike, but I'm, I'm never going to sell this bike. So unless something would happen to it or, uh, <clears throat> you know, something else would come up that I want to upgrade to or change over to, I will keep this bike. Um, it's almost everything that I want in a dual sport. So, like the video states, there's the XT250 also. I don't have a TW200 uh, to show you, at least, but I've spent more time in the saddle of the TW200 <clears throat> than any other bike, as I have owned two of them in my time. So I bought my first one at about, uh, I think I was 15. Yeah, bought my first TW200, a 1995 Fruit Loop, as I've always referred to it. Uh, it had the wacky wild colors, it looked like a Toucan Sam bike. So we will start with the TW200 for this comparison video and um so I'll, I'll i'll state a couple things first off uh i'm six foot tall and i'm about a hundred or i mean uh 205 pounds uh you know unclothed uh back then at 15 i was like you know a hundred and 60 something like that maybe maybe 150 hard to remember <clears throat> but uh yeah the the other thing to state would be that you need to understand that when it comes to dual sports um i don't personally believe that uh, a dual sport is for the highway at all. So I wouldn't recommend a dual sport for the highway. My, myself, personally, I don't recommend motorcycles for the highway. Um, in, in, you know, in, in yesteryear, um, it might have been, it would have been a different story, but uh, the way people are allowed to drive nowadays, I don't recommend motorcycles go on the expressways. So that being said, uh, I will touch on that though. So, uh, you, the other thing to state is that you need to understand what a dual sport is. A dual sport is a compromise. I don't care which one you're talking about. A dual sport is a compromise. It is a compromise bike. You trade off this for that. Okay, so there is no dual sport out there that is great at everything because by, na by the nature of the bike, the design of the bike, it's not going to be good at everything. Um, <clears throat> you know, some of them are, are just plated dirt bikes and then some of them are a little more, um, you know, tour worthy type bikes. Um, but they're compromises, okay? So, well then, let's, let's get to the TW200. Um, I love the TW200. I have just, um, uh, I've outgrown the TW200 for what I intend to do now as a dual sport rider. Um, <clears throat> TW200 is a goat and i mean that in both ways i mean that in the the newer way you know greatest of all time goat but i also mean it as in that thing is a fucking mountain goat 
it will go anywhere you point it. Uh, it's not, it's not mm, that great of a, a, like a hill climb bike, you know, but I'm telling you, dude, I had, when I was 15 and I had that bike, I've, I've done shit on a TW that, that you wouldn't believe. And I've done shit on TWs that you wouldn't think about doing on other bikes. I've done shit on a TW that I wouldn't think about doing on this bike. Uh, the TW200 is a very underpowered tractor of a bike. As you'll hear, you know, all the things that you hear from the other people, you know, the bike hasn't really, has not seen any significant changes whatsoever in like over 30 years. Um, they are absolutely bulletproof. I mean, I can attest to that. I had two. Like I said, I had the 95. I sold that to get my first car at 18. And then I found myself wanting a bike again years later. And I personally have never wanted a big bike. Uh, something that I hold in high regards when it comes to a, a, a bike riding off-road is seat height. I'm, like I said, I'm six foot tall, but I do not ever want a tall bike. I don't want a 37 inch seat height. I don't want a 36 inch seat height. Um, I am finding that the, the 300, well, first of all, um, it has, I've only got 150 miles on this bike. She's brand new. 2022, uh, but as as you he you'll hear, the suspension is very soft. I don't want to get off of the the TW200 yet, uh, but I lose, I'm losing my train of thought there. Oh, seat height. Okay, so the TW200 seat height is like as low as you're going to get. Um, for as far as a beginner bike, it is as good as of a beginner bike as you could possibly get for anyone under six foot tall. I would say for anyone six foot tall or taller, um, the XT250 or like a CRF250 uh, would be probably a better place to start. Unless the, T, the the aspects that I'll tell you about the TW two hundred really suit, you know what? Like I said, what you're going to be doing with the bike. So the TW two hundred um, is just absolute badass at um, going where the hell no, where other people aren't going to go, or where you you'll be you'll be you'll be leading with the TW200 when it comes to like shit terrain uh the things that that stick out in my mind are like creek beds because the TW200 has that big ass like ATV rear tire i mean that that some bitch is like that some bitch is like 8 inches wide or something like that and it just bowls over stuff it's it's just like a boulder crusher of a tire. Um and the gearing on that bike, the thing is an absolute stump puller. Uh first gear on that bike is so badass in terrible terrain. That's why I said call it the goat. Uh because when it comes to the to the tough shit, when the going gets tough, the TW gets going. It ain't going to do it fast, but that son of a bitch will do it, man. You can take it in a really rocky, just literally just like river rock, you know, tattered creek bed. And it will absolutely lug along in that first gear and just just tromps over those rocks um, up like a, a washouts or, or where, where, you know, the... The rainwater washes down hills or whatever, like back in the woods. So, like, 
really rocky, you know, I don't know what you call them, runoffs. Really rocky runoffs. That thing will tromps up them, you know. And you have that low seat height as well. Um, I just love the confidence that a low seat height inspires off-road. You will, you will feel a lot. You'll have a lot better time having that confidence that you can almost always put a foot down. You know, unless you're on like a hillside and you lean the wrong way or you stall or something and tip the wrong way. But you're still going to be significantly closer to the ground on that TW than any other bike. Um, but they are just a little badass goat of a bike. I love them. Uh, and God forbid you ever look up TW 200s that uh, people have modified into like cafe racer styles because then you're going to need two. Um, <laughs> they're just, they, they put an extended swing arm on them and uh, all kinds of, they just kind of gut them. You can just gut that bike because they're very bare bones bike. You're talking about, you know, uh, 80s. Uh, technology it's a carbureted bike it's a five-speed bike and uh, let's see yeah if you know if you've got a farm and you want to put like a rack on the back of the thing and maybe like take it as a hunting bike that would be a excellent hunting bike if you put a rack on the back, man, you could sling like a, a deer, you know, over the back of that bike and guarantee you that bike will get you back home. Uh, the thing just tromps his terrain. <clears throat> they're badass. No doubt they're badass, but you have, well, they did update them. You have a front disc brake on them, but they are rear drum brake as well. So five speed. Uh, rear drum brake carbureted bike and everything on them is analog so all your your gauges are all analog gauges and <clears throat> that bike is an awesome like city runabout bike so like running running errands, you know, around town or whatever. If you just have some stuff around town to run around and do some little doodad stuff. Uh, really cool, fun bike to rip around on. Oh, I think what you'll find with the TW200, and I think it's what almost everybody finds ultimately, is that they get to a point where they are riding that bike to its capacity but they're not riding, they're not able to ride that bike to their capabilities now. So they outgrow the bike skill wise. And you may outgrow the bike physically as well. If you are a younger rider and you grow into a tall person, you're going to be stuffed on that bike somewhat. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that I just adore about the TW200 is the looks of them. I think they are the coolest looking bike ever. And I remember as a kid, as like a 9, 10 year old kid, I used to get like the MX magazine or whatever and look through that thing. And looking at all the bikes, you know, all the bikes look the same. All the bikes look the same. And I got to the Yamahas and I turned the page and there is that TW200. And I did that big beefy rear tire and kind of like the, uh, it almost has like cruiser type looks to it, sort of. Um, I, I didn't know anything about bikes or anything about it. I said, that's my, that's the bike. That's my bike. I have to have that bike. I absolutely fell in love with the looks of the TW200 and still to this day, just adore that bike, the looks I just think it's an awesome, awesome bike. But, um, you know, it is, it's funner to ride a slow bike fast than to ride a fast bike fast. I'll say that again. It's funner to ride a slow bike fast than to ride a fast bike fast. 
there's something about knowing that you can push that bike and it's it's not going to you know uh overpower you or whatever or there's not too much power there to get you in trouble your skill level has gotten to that point the seat height is low it's you can throw that bike around on trails you know it's flickable very very flickable uh so there's just so much to be loved about the TW200 but i think in, in i know in my experience once i got that second one um i found that i wanted more power i wanted more top end um yeah, I just, I wanted something that, uh, you know, if I took a trip, like I said, I don't put bikes on the expressway. I won't do it. But if I took a trip or whatever to, say, a friend's house to ride on their property or something, that bike, to me, that bike feels wrung out at 55 miles an hour. It really does. You can change the sprocket. That does make a huge difference. I believe I ended up on a 47 tooth rear sprocket from the stock 50. And that was great. That was a great improvement for rideability, even around the city and stuff like that. I would skip gears on the TW200. That's how deeply geared that bike is. That's how much of a tractor that thing is. Like I would start out in first and like uh, then go to second and then I would skip third to fourth and I skip other stuff. Sometimes I just start in second and uh <laughs> but yeah, I guess, you know, as far as uh reliability, you aren't going to find a more reliable bike. Those things are bulletproof tanks. They're absolute badasses of a bike. That's enough about that. That's like 17 minutes about the TW for fuck's sake. <clears throat> Jeez. The XT250, so um, I got rid of the TW200 some years back, got the itch to buy a bike again. Uh, I said, well, last time I wanted some more bike, uh, I said, let's do 50 more cc's. And I, this is something that I never was really told. 50 cc's isn't a big jump at all. 50 cc's is like nothing. I'm, it's not like nothing, it's something... But, like, if anybody's afraid they're going to get too much bike or something by going up 50 cc's or even 100 cc's, if you have some experience on a bike, you're, it's, that's not going to be, like, a huge leap for you. You're not going to feel overwhelmed by that power increase or anything like that. Uh, so, the, T, uh, the XT250, um, I have a love-hate thing for this bike. Uh, it is, I absolutely despise the seat on this bike. And what I, I have done is I picked up one of these Mad Dog Gear uh, ATV uh, seat covers from like Walmart. Um, and that's got some gel type of stuff in it. It's cool. Um, but then I also picked up after that, because the chick that I bought this from, she took an inch of foam out of the stock seat, and it's absolutely miserable. It's like riding on a two-by-four. So I had to build that back. I bought a purple brand uh, gel seat pad. This is for, like, camping chairs. You can look this up. It was, like, 40 bucks, and it's got purple honeycomb uh, gel stuff in it. this type of stuff and it's thick so I stuff that under I stuff that under the mad dog and I stuff it more forward because this this bike has a super deep like V pitch to the seat it's partially designed after trials bikes if you know anything about trials bikes I'm not going to go into that uh, so most uncomfortable seat I've ever had. Ooh, the TW200, the seat on that bike is stupid comfy. Love the seat on the TW200 also. So, 
hate the seat on the XT250. Absolutely hate it. It's like pitches you forward. You feel like you're always sliding down into the bike more up here. And then you feel crowded. I'm six foot. This is not a comfortable bike. I'm going to say this right now. If you are six foot tall, an XT250 is a poor choice for you. It is crowded. You may not realize it. I've heard people saying, though, that, oh, the, the XT250 is fine for a six foot rider. Bullshit. It is not fine for a six foot rider. You're cramped on this bike. You can get different bars, whatever. This bike is cramped for a six foot rider. Um, seat height off the ground is awesome on this bike. Very, very, very comparable to the TW200 seat height. Uh, you're going to, you're going to be able to get feet down, you know, uh, once again, very flickable. This is a great trails bike. It really, really is. And for hill climbs, this bike kicks ass, man. You, cause you can get up in that V there. And like you're riding like at the base of the tank, man. You can just get on that sucker and do just bury this thing up a hill. It's badass trails bike. It really, really is. Uh, once again, though, now the modern ones are fuel injected. I made the mistake of saying I didn't want fuel injected. And I had good reason for it because I want to be able to work on my bike if I need to. I like simplicity. That's one of the reasons I always love the TW200. Problem with this is if you get a 2009, I believe, or 2010 or earlier model, the way they design this frame, this pisses this pissed me off to no end. They absolutely bury the carburetor up in this thing. It's back in there somewhere. Okay? You can't get to the son of a bitch. The TW200, you can literally reach in there and do whatever you want to do with the carb. Turn it sideways in the boots. Take jets out. Whatever. Uh, you can't do a damn thing with this. Um, the other thing I'll say about the XT250, uh, I think it's uglier than shit. This is an ugly bike. Uh, the tail end of the bike is ugly. Um, I got low, pr I've got, see, I bought this because it, it was already outfitted with like so many things that I wanted. Um, I didn't necessarily get a good deal on it. I got a fair deal for how the market was at the time, but uh, low profile, which didn't matter. She laid this thing down plenty. There's no doubt about that. But once again, bulletproof bike. Yamaha. I've been a Yamaha fan my whole life. That's all I've ever owned. Uh, the problem is that Yamaha now wants to take out of their dual sport lineup instead of add. So they've pulled the WR250, which the problem with that for me was always the seat height. I didn't want to bike that high. Yeah, I could lower it, um, and that was always a consideration. But when they pulled it, I was hoping that they had something to replace it. I mean, that would make sense, right? Nope. So they pull, they've pulled it like two years ago, and they haven't replaced it yet. So anyway, the X-T250, um, you do have digital gauge here. Um, it, it, I think it shares the same, yeah, it shares the same controls here as the TW200. Uh, doesn't share the same gauges you know you get digital on this but it is very basic uh no shift indicator no gear indicator no nothing like that it's very basic no rpm um yeah very basic um you do get a front and rear disc on the xt250 but once again five speed bike and i had made the decision that i was did not want a five-speed bike anymore because once again I feel like the bike is rung out at 60 miles an hour <clears throat> um, and I, I just I feel like it deserves a sixth gear um, so you know with no new offering in the market um, I decided 
that I was going to go with the 300L. Uh, I knew the shortcomings of the bike, the suspension, uh, and let's see if, is there, if there's more that I can say about the XT250. Um, extremely uncomfortable. Uh, I loathe the gas tank. I don't know. I think this is, yeah, this is original. This, this, the gas cap, this is original, unless I'm wrong, unless somebody, but it matches the gas tank, and I'm almost, I'm like 100% positive the gas tank's original. This is horrible. This thing's horrible. It's so difficult to, to, uh, to get off, and it's just really bad. It's really bad. Trust me. It's really bad. Um, I hate the front end. Ugly, another ugly. I hate the round headlight. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Uh, halogen. I, I, I think it's a very ugly bike. Um, it's, it's very good at some stuff. Like I said, great trail bike. Really, really great trail bike. Um, excellent uh, at, for climbing hills, like I said, because of that. But... If I put 100 miles on this bike in a day, I'm, my ass is miserable. It feels like I'm getting blasted in the tailbone. No matter what I have done with this, I haven't proved it. Now, cushion-wise, it's fantastic. But when I get off of this bike, I feel like I've been paddled with a 2x4 in the tailbone because of that damn deep V-pitched seat. You can't see it so well because I got the this thing on it. But yeah, there you go. Let's see. It's very deep pitch to the seat. Um, what else to talk about on it? It is it is nice. The the dual disc brakes is very nice. Um, and it was a nice little power increase from the two hundred. Definitely noticeable. Definitely a lot better. But I fairly quickly got to the point where. I wanted a little more power again than the 250 was delivering me. Plus, the comfort issue, it's just a no-go. Um, Off-roads where this bike shines, for sure. Uh, I've loved having it outfitted with the racks and stuff like that. Um, it has been a good bike to me. No problems whatsoever. Just like no problem. Yamaha, you, you listen, you're not going to beat the reliability of a Yamaha. Yamaha is the absolute number one most reliable motorcycle brand in the world. In the world. And that's over Honda. I don't care what anybody tells you. Go look in Consumer Reports. Go do your research, as they say. I hate to say that, but yeah. Go do your research and you'll find that Yamaha is the most reliable motorcycle brand in the world. Honda is a close second. Very close second. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll get on to this, the 300 then. It's a long video, I know, but if you're interested, here's the information. Um, loving the seat height of this bike. The craziest thing about this bike is how far it leans over. Their kickstand is, like, too short. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's kind of an easy fix. I'm not going to spend $100 on the extendable kickstand. Um, I'm going to, I work in a machine shop, uh, and I got a buddy that works in a machine shop. He knows more. I'm probably going to have him design me a boot, a foot for the kickstand that shims it up three quarters of an inch, and I will be happy with that. Because actually off-road, I'm happy that this kickstand is shorter than most, or the bike leans over more than most, however you want to put it. Uh, because I always found off-road that when I would get off a bike, I would always seem to be like leaning uh, into the uphill or whatever How when I want to park it. Um, and it would be standing too straight up, and I'd be worried it was going to tip over. And it seems like now, like when I take this bike off-road, it's still the same. Like I'm always leaning into a hill, it seems like. But it's better because it, it's a little, it leans a little harder. Uh, so far, 150 miles is all I've got. 
but so far, um, I really like the bike. The biggest things that stood out to me on this bike, um, first thing that I noticed was the power. Um, it is a 286 cc, uh, so it comes in lower than I think the, the KLX 300 does, uh, but it makes better torque than that bike, and that is from this tried and true engine that they went with. It's a tried and true engine. I don't even know the name of the engine or whatever, but it's from a street bike. It's it's tested. It's tried and true. Um, this bike this is the first thing I noticed, man, is the power is there all the time throughout the RPM range. The first thing that I noticed was that I kept like coming up to a turn or whatever, like two gears too high. Uh, just because I didn't, I didn't notice it, uh, because, and, and you could do that. You could come up to a turn, not like a stop sign or whatever, but a turn that you're going to, you know, roll into a decent turn too, and be two gears too high and roll on that throttle and it will still do it. It will still pick up and go. Now it's not going to pick up and go like if you, you were in the, the gear you should be in, but it still picks up and go. Like the power is always there throughout the RPM range and throughout the gears. Absolutely awesome. Awesome. Um, the increase in CCs from the from the 250. Uh, to me, it's actually a, a, a big noticeable factor. Uh, this, this isn't even broken in yet. So it's going to build more power once it's broke in and I already feel it bu building more power from you know the one mile point to the 150 mile point I already feel that it's building power um but when you roll on this thing it goes it goes uh the the gauges and everything are awesome you get a gear indicator you get rpm bars um, you get your, your gas mileage, what kind of gas mileage you're getting. Uh, I think it tells you how many tanks you've been through. Um, I chose the non ABS version. Uh, it's like $350 cheaper or something. I've never had ABS on a bike and I never said, man, I wish I had ABS. Okay. So $350. Yeah. Give it, give me the non. I got lucky. They got three in and they called me. On a Friday when everybody else was probably working. Well, I'm off on Fridays. And uh, so I rolled in there and said, okay, you got two, a two ABSs and one non. Give me the non. It's cheaper. Uh, there's no bargaining right now with bikes. You're paying what they're asking. Or they're going to laugh in your fucking face. And they're going to call the next guy who's on the waiting list. And he's going to come up there and snatch it out right from under your nose. That's the way it is right now. So you got to get realistic here. Um, let's see. Uh, comfort wise, um, it's fine. It's fine. It's more, much, much, much more comfortable than the XT250. Like by a mile. Like I said, that's literally the factor why I'm getting rid of that bike. That and I wanted a little more power. I wanted. Now you got six gears. It's so much better. This thing is. It's to me, it's comfortable rolling at that 60 mile per hour, 65 mile per hour. I don't, it don't, I don't feel like the bike is, is just, just tapped out. You know, I don't feel like I'm fucking dogging that bike. Uh, the fuel injection, fucking a dude. Every time I get on and off of this bike, I feel like I have to do something that I don't have to do. Like I'm wanting to go to turn the fuel, the petcock on. Or to pull a choke or something like that. I'm like, no, you know you don't have to do that. <laughs> it, I, it start, I'm starting to get it in my mind. But damn, is that ever awesome. To not, have to, to not have to worry about turning the fuel on and off. Or dealing with a choke. 
Oh my God. I just absolutely love that. Um, from the fact, from the dealership, they had too much free play in the, uh, in the throttle. They had like, they had like a quarter inch of free play in the throttle that was super easy to take out just right here. Um, so I fixed that because it, it, it was acting funny for me. Like when I thought I'd be rolling on the throttle, I wasn't rolling on the throttle yet. So the, I was the, just kind of dropping the clutch on its face, you know. So I took that out, and, and that's gravy now. Um, front and rear disc brakes, obviously. Uh, yeah, dude, the power all over and the increase from that 200cc or 196cc is what it actually is with the, 200, the TW200 to... The 286 cc. I am now where I want to be. This is kind of like uh, I won't say it's where I always wanted to be, but this is where I am good. I'm happy, and I can I can already guarantee that I'm not going to get used to this bike, and then say eh, I want a little more power, like I did with these other two. This is good. I'm happy here. This has just the right amount of power for me for what I'm wanting in a dual sport. Um, the factory tires from it, uh, they absolutely suck. These IRC factory tires suck. Now, I have to take them off-road again because I deflated them down to a better pressures. I deflated them from like 21, 22, something like that they had them at. These things were just slipping everywhere off road. It was horrible. I have, I, I'm pretty damn sure they're still going to slip pretty bad. Uh, they've got to go and get the uh, wonderful Dunlop 606 thrown on there from this bike and throw these pieces of shit on that bike and sell that when spring rolls around here. Um, thrown my rack on it. Got a rack for it. Got a uh, rackless bag system from Tusk that I think is going to be just spectacular. Um, and uh, a skid plate. Threw a skid plate on there. I got some, uh, what do you call crash bars or a bark buster type deals or whatever. I got those coming. And, um, shit, what was I just going to say about this bike? Fuck. Hold on. Oh, my God. The other thing, for, this was truly the first thing I noticed. The clutch on this bike is magnificent. I've never had anything like this on a bike. This clutch is absolutely effortless. It is absolutely effortless. One finger clutching. It's effortless compared to anything else. I can't tell you how wonderful that is for me. Um, I got arthritis in the hands and a day of riding. I got I got a lot of I got muscle issues in my hands too. I used to work out and um, I kind of did a lot of damage to myself, uh, either doing stuff wrong or going too hard in the gym when I used to work out. So I have kind of like some cramping issues in the in the meat of my hand here. Uh, they kind of work themselves out once I've started riding a little bit, but then I also, at the end of the day, my hands get so bad stiff. I'm 41 years old now, so that is something huge to consider, is getting a bike. This is like a, it's some sort of power-assisted clutch. I forget what the deal is, but yes, yeah, see, do you see how it just kind of takes off? Once it gets to a once it gets to this point, the engagement point, the thing just takes off. It's like stupid easy to, to work. That has been phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, like I said, the gas tank on the other one that I hate, no issue here. This is lovely. The gas cap, um, operating the gas cap, taking it on and off is fantastic. Let's see. There you go. Just kind of goes to the side there. Uh, very, very easy to operate. Um, oh, something about the XT250. The, the, uh, 
The choke on the XT250 is horrible. Absolutely horrible. It is so tough. It is so tough, and it's in a goofy spot. You get used to it, but if you're coming from, like, the uh, TW200, this is really goofy. Um, God, I can't say enough about how wonderful that clutch is on this bike. And the power all over, and then let me think about what the other thing I was going to say. Oh, the suspension is the biggest lacking part of the bike, which is very well-known information. Once I get a little more time in the saddle, I'm certain that I'm going to want to swap this out. Like I said, I'm 208 pounds clothed and everything. So, uh, and then, you know, I'll add baggage to it and a little, the little bit of armor that I'm, I'm going to focus on keeping this bike lightweight. Uh, uh, but I'm certain that I'm going to find that I want to upgrade the suspension on this bike. Oh, I know what it was I was going to say. What this bike is, this is really the coup de grace here. What this bike is, is a very, very, um, sort of stripped down, excellent base model to develop on to improve like i said they cut they cut corners but you you when you are like they didn't cut it's really hard to say the bike feels refined but it also like a lot of the components feel like they're just meant like this is meant to be a base model that you build on that's what it feels like to me. It feels like an excellent, excellent platform that is a very refined, very capable, very reliable, um, well-designed machine that comes bare bones is what I want to say. Now, it has some excellent features to it, like I said, but then there's the stuff that like you can improve on like it like it doesn't the things like it doesn't come with a skid it comes with no skid plate right the the really cheap suspension okay but then there's other like very important features that are so nice and the bike is just an excellent base platform to build into something spectacular so it, I feel like they focused on giving you an entry-level, excellent platform that you can scoop up at a good price and then over a couple years turning it and turn it into something spectacular. And, you know, once you do that, you're going to be like glowingly happy with this bike. Um, I'm stupid happy with it already. I'm keeping this bike hands down. Uh, Yamaha left my good graces. Uh, like I was a, I was a Yamaha diehard. Like that's, that's what I would own. And I waited two years and they didn't step up to the plate with an, with an, an offering, you know, Kawasaki hit with the 300, Honda hit with a 300 and they still got an empty hole in their lineup that they're not, they're not filling. So, um, you know, I said, okay. Well, I guess I'm going Team Red. Um, so in the future, potentially, if Yamaha would knock it out of the park with something, um, like the Tenere 700 is fucking badass, right? But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a bike that hits that 300-pound mark, and that's what this does. 300 pounds... 300 pounds this bike probably actually weighs more because i have the metal racks on it it has a metal skid plate um it might not be yeah it's probably right around the same weight but then you get an extra 50 cc's here you get an extra gear you get power all over which this does not have this thing will lug up a hill if you're in the wrong gear you know you know it this bike, you almost don't know it. Like, you just, you kind of almost find out. 
it becomes a little evident to you, but you kind of find out when you look at the gear indicator and you're like, what? I'm in fifth gear going 30 miles an hour? I didn't even realize it because when you roll on the throttle, the power's still there. So, fucking awesome bike. This is what I've been after for a, a long time and didn't know it. And this is where I'm happy. So, that's my comparisons with the three bikes. I hope that helps you. Uh, I'll throw something in there about the DRZ 400. Uh, you couldn't get me to touch one. Um, it, the bike hasn't been updated in 20 years. And it's a, it's a five-speed. So, there's that. Um, and uh, to speak on sort of that same front with the TW, the TW hasn't been updated in probably 20 years. Um, and I wouldn't pay MSRP or I wouldn't pay the five grand that they're asking for a new TW 200. That bike's not worth five grand. So if you decide that you want the TW 200, buy a used TW 200. They're bulletproof. Um, th see, the problem with that right now is that people want new prices for used TW 200s. Um, I, it's, it's absolutely absurd, ridiculous what I've seen. Um, because I was kind of looking at getting another one when I, when I opted for this instead, because I knew I wanted that extra power. I didn't want to be in that same spot again. And they wanted, you know, they wanted fucking $4,500 for a three-year-old TW200 with 1,700 miles on it or 2,000 miles on it or whatever. And I'm like, no, you're, you're insane. They're 4,000 new or they're 5,000 new. Uh, so I wouldn't pay full price for a TW200 new, and I, I sure as hell wouldn't pay it for one used. So where does that leave you? That leaves you, if you're interested, you know, get on a waiting list. I was on a waiting list for a little over three months to get this bike, because that's what it is with the uh, supply chain right now. <laughs> uh, but super glad that I did. You know, I got the call out of the blue, wasn't expecting it, but I had the money aside. You know, savings, uh, so no issue, I'm glad I jumped on it, you know, I could have said, in eh, never mind, I mean, I'd kind of totally forgotten about it, or whatever, I've been riding this XT, and, uh, did not realize how bad the clutch is on this, until I rode this, and did not realize how cramped I was on this, as a six-foot rider, than when I got this, um, don't feel cramped at all on this bike. I feel like I need to bump the uh, the handlebars up a little bit. So probably going to get like some Pro Taper uh, CR high bend bars or something, or just throw my throw my Tusk risers from this over onto there for now. For now, because uh, I've spent a shit ton of money <laughs> this last month, and uh, yeah. If I think anything else, I'll hit it on here.